We've recently learned that a positive standard cell potential corresponds to a spontaneous redox reaction. We've also learned from thermodynamics that the spontaneity of a reaction can be determined by the sign of the standard free energy change. Thus, we'd expect that there's a relationship between the standard cell potential and the standard free energy change. We've also learned previously that when we have a spontaneous reaction, the equilibrium constant K is greater than 1. Therefore, we'd also expect to find a relationship between the standard cell potential and the equilibrium constant. For the relationship between the standard free energy change and the standard cell potential, we're not going to worry about how this relationship is derived. Instead, we'll just give you the result of the equation. This relationship says that the standard free energy change is equal to minus n times the capital letter F times the standard cell potential. In this case, the lowercase n is the moles of electrons that are transferred in the balanced redox reaction. The capital letter F represents the Faraday constant, and this Faraday constant has a value of 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. When you're working with this relationship, you need to recall that the standard free energy change is typically given in kilojoules. However, the standard cell potentials are usually determined in units of volts. But when we were learning about cell potentials, we learned that one volt is the same as one joule per coulomb. So wherever you have volt units, you can simply substitute the volts for joules per coulomb. In this example, we're asked to use the electrode potentials that are provided to calculate the standard free energy change for the reaction involving one mole of iron metal reacting with one mole of lead ions to produce one mole of iron 2 plus ions and one mole of lead metal. To begin this problem, since we're looking for the standard free energy change and we're provided with the cell or electrode potentials, we probably first want to calculate the standard cell potential. And we recall that we do that by taking the electrode potential for the cathode and subtracting from that the electrode potential for the anode. However, we have to decide first of all which is the anode and which is the cathode. Since we have iron metal going to iron 2 plus, that means the iron metal is losing electrons so the iron metal is being oxidized, and whatever is oxidized is the anode. At the same time, the lead ions are being reduced to lead metal, and so the lead is serving as the cathode. Now that we've identified the anode and the cathode, we can go ahead and calculate the standard cell potential. So to get this, we have the electrode potential for the cathode, which is the lead half reaction, or negative 0.13 volts. And we subtract from that the anode electrode potential, which for iron is negative 0.45 volts. When we carry out that subtraction, we get a standard cell potential of positive 0.32 volts. Since that's a positive standard cell potential, we know that this is going to be a spontaneous redox reaction. The second step we want to do in order to find the standard free energy change is to determine the number of moles of electrons transferred in the balanced chemical equation. In both half reactions, we see that there are two moles of electrons transferred. For iron metal, going to iron 2 plus, it has to lose two moles of electrons, and for lead 2 plus, going to lead metal, it has to gain two moles of electrons. So in this reaction, n has a value of 2. Finally, now that we've found the standard cell potential and the moles of electrons, we're ready to plug these values in to the equation 
delta G0 equals minus nF E0. However, since the standard cell potential was in volts, we can sim simply replace the volts with the units of joules per coulomb. When we plug in these values, we have negative 2 moles of electrons times the Faraday constant, 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons, multiplied by the standard cell potential, which is positive 0.32 joules per coulomb. The moles of electrons will cancel, the coulomb units will cancel, and this will give us a value of negative 62,000 joules. However, since we prefer our standard free energy change in kilojoules, we'll have a standard free energy change of negative 62 kilojoules. Now, since this standard free energy change is negative, that's another indication that this reaction is spontaneous. And this is a good way to check to make sure that you have not missed any positive or negative signs. Since the standard cell potential indicated we have a spontaneous process, and the standard free energy change indicates we have a spontaneous process, we probably have not made any errors in forgetting a positive or negative sign. We now have two equations that we can use to calculate the free energy change. We have delta G0 equals minus RT times the natural log of the equilibrium constant K, and we also have the standard free energy change is equal to minus NFE, where E is the standard cell potential. Since both of these equations give us the standard free energy change, we could set these two equations equal to each other, and we end up with the equation that the standard cell potential equals RT over NF times the natural log of K. However, we can make a few substitutions. If we carry out this reaction at 298 Kelvin, and if we substitute the natural log for the log of K, we can end up with the new equation that the standard cell potential is equal to 0.0592 volts over N times the log of K. This second version of this equation will give us a relationship between the standard cell potential and the equilibrium constant provided that we're working at 298 Kelvin and that we're able to determine the moles of electrons transferred. In this equation, we're asked to use the electrode potentials provided to calculate the equilibrium constant for the reaction where we have two moles of iron metal reacting with six moles of hydrogen ions to produce two moles of iron three ions and three moles of hydrogen gas. Since we have electrode potentials for the two half reactions and we're looking for the equilibrium constant, we know we can use the equation that the standard cell potential is equal to 0.0592 volts over the moles of electrons transferred times the log of K. The next thing we'll want to do is we'll want to calculate the standard cell potential. Again, we'll want to identify the cathode and the anode, and in this case, since the iron metal is going to iron 3 plus ions, that means that the iron is losing electrons, so the iron metal is oxidized, so in this case, the iron half reaction is the anode. That means that the hydrogen half reaction must be the cathode. To find the standard cell potential, we take the cathode electrode potential minus the anode electrode potential. So that's 0, 0.00 volts minus a negative 0 0.036 volts, and this gives us a standard cell potential of positive 0 0.036 volts. The next step is to identify the moles of electrons transferred in the balanced chemical equation. Now, for one iron, we see that the iron is going from 0 to 3 plus, so the iron is losing 3 electrons. However, if you know the coefficient of 2 in the balanced equation, 
That means we multiply those three electrons times two, which means that there are six moles of electrons transferred. Just to check to make sure we're doing this right, we see that we have six hydrogen ions going to three moles of hydrogen H2 gas. So that also involves six electrons. So for this balanced redox reaction, N equals six. Finally, since we're looking for the equilibrium constant in this case, we can rearrange the equation so that we get log K equals the standard cell potential times the moles of electrons transferred divided by 0 0.0592 volts. When we plug in the values, we get positive 0 0.036 volts times 6 divided by 0 0.0592 volts. This gives us a value of 3.65 for the log of k. However, we only have two significant figures. In order to get the value of the equilibrium constant, we take 10 raised to the 3.65 power, and we get a value of 4.45 times 10 to the third. Since the value of this equilibrium constant is greater than 1, that tells us that this process is going to be spontaneous. If we look back at our standard cell potential, it had a positive value, which also indicated that we had a spontaneous process. Since both of these checks tell us that we have a spontaneous process, we can be sure that we did not miss a positive or negative sign somewhere in the equation.